everyone is just as valuable. We all have something that other people don't have, and it's okay to take time to find out what that something is. Welcome back to Midnight O2 Season Two, Episode Fourteen. This is your host Amy. First of all, Happy New Year! I know it's been a while. There's a lot of things that happened that went out of my plans, but it's okay. I'm here, so I hope everything's going well for you. Today, I want to talk about change. I used to be someone who thought changes are not okay. I used to tell everybody around me that I don't want to change. Nobody is going to change me ever. And then I grew up. Things happened. I realized I was very wrong, and I wanted to talk to you about this today. I thought changes are important. I thought if I don't change in the next forty, fifty years, that means there's no improvements, there's no change, and that's a bad thing. So when I talk about and think about changes these days, I feel like I'm more open-minded, and I'm okay with changes. And sometimes the changes at the moment. Feel very weird and odd, and you don't think changes are good, but then later on, when you look back, they are right decisions that you eventually made in your life that made you change. So I want to provide some examples. So today I want to be very open and talk about my career path a little bit. Today I want to talk about all the things that I did outside of writing, but I did those not only to help my you know financial. Or just, I did a lot of things outside of writing, just because there are a lot of things that interest me, and I want to explore every single one of them. I believe it's important to explore every little opportunity and every little field that you're interested in, and I did that by actually taking the actions. <laughs> and this is something that a lot of my friends were confused about. And this is something that my family didn't want to support me on. So when I was in college, I went to college, deciding or was convinced by my parents that I would major in something like biochem or biology or chemistry, and then have a minor in English or English creative writing, something like that, because I was convinced that. It's okay. I need something that's quote unquote useful to be okay and to live in the society. And English and writing could just be a side thing. You know, I had to convince myself. I brainwashed myself all the years in high school, rejecting the fact that you know writing was the spark <laughs> in my life. But then later on, I went to college, and you've heard the story if you're in my old reader slash audience that. I was stuck in chemistry class because I promised my parents I would take chemistry even though I hate it so much. I was in chemistry class and we were doing labs and a lot of people were talking about how much they were interested in the topics. We were doing I think titration lab or something, and then there was a girl. She was a dance major, and we had a conversation. She said, "Hey, I don't understand why I'm here, honestly." I don't know why I even took this. I'm a dance major, and I looked at her. I was like, "Huh?" And then other people were like, "We we love chemistry. We're doing biology. We're doing physics, and we love science. That's why we're here. And it's important. And we don't hate it. And we're pretty much good at it." And then that's the moment I asked myself, "Why am I here? I don't even like chemistry. I don't even want to be in science field." After trying and trying and staying up. I basically slept for like three hours every single day just to get that chemistry homework done. And it's not like I didn't work hard. I worked so hard, all my friends knew, but it didn't work out. And then at that point, I had a huge fight with my parents. I broke down in front of them when we met later on for three hours. I cried and cried, talking about how much I don't like chemistry and I didn't want to go to medical school. As you know, I talked about this story in season one. But this is not my point today, and we moved on. And my parents didn't want to admit that I wanted to do something else. They told everyone else that 
I was just deciding. I still didn't know what to do, but I knew, you know, I knew in the like the deepest part of my heart that I wanted to do writing and I wanted to do arts. I wanted to do music, and so the first day of the next semester, next quarter, I went to the department of English and department of visual arts. I talked to the advisor, and they looked at my grades. They looked at my samples and everything. They looked at all my projects, and they were like, "Yes, you belong here. Where have you been?" And this is exactly what the counselor said. And I just looked at her. I felt like, "Oh, I'm home." <laughs> That's how I felt. So I wanted to share that with you. Well, that was important because later on, I talked to my friends, and then a part of me majored in English creative writing, and then double majored in visual arts. But I wanted to do more. I was some. I was the type of person who's always looking for something to do. I didn't want to just chill and <laughs> just be like a、uh, boring person. <laughs> Let's put it that way. I wanted something to fill out all my blank time, and I need I need something to challenge me, and a lot and a lot. It's not like the majors didn't challenge me. Of course they did. They filled out the passion part of me, but I wanted something that was very Intellectual. I wanted something that challenged me on a daily basis, outside of the fields that I love. And then I looked at, I looked into psychology. So for those who know me, I love psychology, and I, this is my love for psychology started when I was, like, in middle school or something. I always read a lot of books on psychology and philosophy, and I was so interested and intrigued by all the theories and how they could be applied in real life. And I looked at all the cases that were interesting among among people and among different languages and different cultures. I just thought it's very interesting, and because of my love for psychology, that I thought. I thought at that time, if I like psychology, I could eventually study psychology, and then I could probably become a psychologist. That's what I thought, and I bought all the books. I bought all the books on psychology. I bought, um, you know, my love for psychology then developed in high school. I was the president of the psychology club, and I did so much research and. Meetings on why psychology is so cool. Took AP Psych, everything, and I was almost determined that I wanted to major in psychology. But then, you know, writing has always been that one thing, and I can't major in everything. I couldn't, so I chose two of my majors, which is visual arts and English. The reason why I didn't major in music because I chose music for the past ten years in my life before college, but I did want to do like a third major in music. But my friends stopped me. So if you are listening at this point, you'll probably be like, "Why is Amy everywhere?" And I want to tell you that I'm not everywhere. It's just I love every single one of these, and it makes sense. You see, there's a common point, and there's a similarity in all these fields that I like. It's something that heals people. It's something that makes me. It's something that allows me to express who I am, and has to do with the general human beings, human interaction, human human relationships in general. It's something that I think the society needs among literature, arts, music, everything. Anyways, back to our point. So then I thought I could do psychology. I visited the counselor of psychology department at at my school at that time. And I talked about. I was a freshman in college at that time. I wanted to talk to the counselor about if I didn't major in psychology for my undergraduate program, is it possible for me to do like a master in psychology, or what's the what's the path going on, a PhD in psychology, or become a psychologist? I thought at that time, you know, I write for a wellness section. I care a lot about mental health issues, and I want to help people with, you know, either counseling or just talking to people. And then,、uh, the counselor basically told me, you know, how competitive this is, right? And then, I don't know why, but her words just 
made me feel really bad, <laughs> to be honest. I went home and I, I wasn't just. Her words wasn't that something that made me give up. More so, I didn't give up. I wanted to see if I could do psychology myself. I didn't care what other people tell me, so I started preparing. I bought all the books. Did started doing research on the psychology. For if I were to be a psychologist, if I wanted to be a psychologist, what kind of preparations would I need to do? And I started studying for different psychology, like GRE tests and everything. Since like first year in college, and one of the books that I read, it said, people who want to do psychology later on should have lab experience and everything. So I was very worried at that time as an English major slash visual arts major. I needed to get lab experience in psychology field, and I looked everywhere that I, for some reason, could meet the requirements and everything. And I looked at different science fair and everything, and applied. And then finally, there was this one opportunity that got back to me. But at first. Um, the lab director was saying she wasn't sure. She was glad that I sent my resume and everything, but then she wasn't sure if I was the right person or I could do it. And then I was like, "It's okay. We'll keep in touch." So I did more and more research and preparations, and like, and two quarters later, I got another email from the same lab director. She told me. Hey, would you mind coming in to the lab and let's chat about it? And I was like, yes, yes, like that's what I wanted. I thought that's what I wanted, so I went to the lab, sat down, met with her, and I talked to her about how I want to be a psychologist. I I remember talking to her about this is one of my dreams. I want to be a psychologist. I want to talk to patients. I want to interact. Um. You know, and then the lab director asked me, "Then how come you didn't major in psychology?" And I told her, "I still have passion in English creative writing and visual arts, but I don't want writings or art become a daily part of my job." That's what I told her. I think, and she was like, "Okay." And she asked me what I could do in terms of like other requirement, <laughs> required skills, and then for some reason. She let me in. She let me be be one of the. She gave me the opportunity. She took a chance on me. She let me be her research assistant in the lab, and there were also two other assistants in the lab. But then, other two students, they all majored in psychology or neuron science or science related. So. I was just very different when I talk to them about what we learn on a daily basis. They will be finishing psychology classes and come to the lab, and they would talk to me about the things that they learn in class. And I read books, but of course I couldn't understand as much as they did. But it didn't impact, it didn't affect the daily routines, and didn't. I didn't major in psychology. Doesn't mean I couldn't do what they needed me to do in the lab. So I it took me a while to learn everything and to help with the lab data and the research and to understand all different trials and research methods. But later on, this time went on for. I took it as a test for myself to see if I should stay in the field of psychology. And this went on for two years, one year and a half, almost longer than that. I didn't take anything. The lab director asked me if I wanted school credits for it, and I told her actually I didn't need school credits on the on this. I just did it for myself. I did it out of my love and curiosity for psychology. I didn't need anyone to pay me. I didn't need any credits. So the lab director was like, okay, cool. So I stayed and I went in every week for hours, and after one year and a half, almost two years, I realized it wasn't the right thing. It just felt wrong. And when I told my parents, 
oh, I'm finally doing something that's science related. They were so happy about it. They were like, wow, okay, it's so cool that you're doing that in the lab, and it's psychology. It's really cool. And then the reason I just felt numbed about psychology and facing data and being in the same place, looking over a lot of sheets of data, and organizing them. And understanding and interacting with more like different trials and look through different EEG. I looked at different graphs and everything and analyzed them. Those were very important parts of psychology. I know. I told my parents I wanted to leave this internship opportunity. More like the opportunity that I found myself at. I told them that I don't think this is the right choice. This is the right. I t- I told them I don't think this is the right place for me to be in. And they asked me, "Why would you do that? It's such a good place with good coworkers, and you love your colleagues. Of course, I love them. My lab director was so nice. She did so much for me, and she was so kind, and she taught me a lot of things in psychology." So I explained. I briefly informed and explained my decision on leaving the lab to my parents, and they were upset once again. And then I was a sophomore at that point. I went back to regular school life. I had more time on my own outside of two majors. And then I decided to do study abroad, and that's when I applied for a study abroad in London, and then later on in Tokyo. So when I went to London, went to Tokyo, I studied different subjects, including business, architecture, history, theater. I just wanted to explore different fields because I couldn't. I didn't get a chance to when I was in local school in Taiwan, or I didn't get to when I was so focused on improving my English and getting everything right, getting the right grades when I was in high school, and. I just was too focused on trying to improve my English and improve everything when I was younger. So now that I'm in college and I was in college and I wanted to explore and take every opportunity to dig into the field and to see if I would like it and if I could have a life in it. That's what I wanted to do. All my friends thought I was crazy. You know, there are always there are people who change their majors very many many times. Yes, but I wasn't that type of person. I didn't change my major many many times. I didn't even declare major in the first place. I, of course, later on got into both of my majors: English creative writing and visual arts. And then I looked at different things. People were like, "Why are you doing this?" If I only took classes within my majors, I could have graduated within like three years or maybe shorter than that. But I didn't want to just graduate in three years. I wanted to fill every single quarter with many different classes from many different fields. Yes, I also took atmosphere science, landscape ar- architecture. I just wanted to try. I didn't want to have regrets. I was always too scared. And then when I went to college, I was my own boss. I wanted to take everything that. Interest me, and that went for it, and then that's when later on, I started to embrace changes, and things didn't go as planned. I stepped into another field. Later on, I realized it's very important and very cool to do a startup. I was in Seattle, of course. I would always have opportunities to meet with different people who were interested in business and ideas, and everything was growing, everything was fast, fast-paced, and there were a lot of ideas, a lot of people talking about new ideas, and the field of entrepreneurship started to grab my attention, and that was the end of the end of sophomore year, early junior year. I started to learn, self-learn, user experience design, and break times, and started to take classes outside of school, online classes or different other schools during summer breaks, and then I had the idea of startup. 
There was this business plan competition that I went for at school in junior year, and then I talked to my friends. I basically had this idea that I wanted to start a business. FYI, my parents are businessmen, and they do business all their lives. I've been explored to business, and that's why from the very beginning, I told them I would never ever go to business school. I would hate to major in business. I don't like the darkness of business, and I want I don't want to deal with it. And then. Years and years later on, I realized, oh, you know, there's a part of me that found this, that enjoyed this part of business side, and entrepreneurship, and I know I would like it. When I went to the business school at my school, and then I went to different conferences with people who major in business, there was this di- dynamics that I just fit in, fit right in with them. And then I felt confused again. I was so confused. I told them, "Hello, guys. This is my thirty-second elevator pitch." And I finished it. People were like, "Oh, okay, cool. You have this idea." And we talked different things about business. And they were like, "Huh? You, are you in the same major with us?" And I told them, "Not really. I'm actually an English major and visual arts too." And they were like, "Whoa, that's very different from what I expected." They were like, "We thought you would be majoring in econ or like." Marketing, something like that, and then I got so confused. I was like, "Oh, wait, wait, wait! I'm very confused with who I am and what I'm doing here." But then, was I happy? I was. I was really happy. I was so excited. I was so excited that I went to different classes in business school, and I took classes, of course, outside of my major again. And then I signed myself up with business plan competition. We didn't win in the end, but throughout the process, I learned so much. I gathered different people who are good at different things, and I formed a team. We did different projects, and I held weekly meetings. And I started to understand the difficult but rewarding sides in business and entrepreneurship, and starting an idea. And I liked it. I liked it a lot, and I connected that part. With my interest in human interaction design, but I wasn't an expert at it. Nowhere near an expert. So I had my friends who were who were really good at computer science and UI UX. They helped me out, and we formed a team. Although we didn't win the prize in the end, I learned a lot, and I confirmed. I almost confirmed that I had this interest in business too, and I love how business could. Grow my leadership and how I could be a leader in a team. I could see pros and cons, and I could understand every team member's ability, and I could negotiate and put everything together. And I like that. I like the me when I was doing business. And then I'm always confused. Back in the regular major, I've been talking with my English professors. I was asking my English professor, "Does every writer need to teach in order to live as a writer?" And then my professor just smiled and looked at me. This was like our after-class conversation. She said, "Yes and no. You will have to teach. Most of the times, people teach." And she told me she only made twelve dollars out of her book after all the things that she went through. For twelve dollars, I was really surprised. She said, "Yeah, because you know the printing, and then the publisher needed to, needed to take some, and blah blah blah." And I was like, "Whoa!" She's like, "Yeah, so I needed. I love teaching." She told me she loves teaching, and that's why she teaches and she writes books, and that's how it works for most of the writers. And then another professor, another English professor, told me, in order to support his love on writing, he had to do. Security had to be a security guy, and then had to do、uh, had to be a waiter, and he went through different many many different jobs. But he said all the experiences that he had doing those jobs all added on to his writing, and t- until today, that still stuck with me, and it makes sense. Makes sense that all ex- experiences as a human being all add. To your writing or whatever you're creating, and I thought that was very important. I wanted to share. I'm glad that I brought that up. I know this episode is a little bit longer, but stay with me, okay? And then I realized, okay, I was doing the business. 
outside of my majors on weekends. So I was basically busy every single day from Monday to Sunday, and I wasn't the type to get like hungover or something. <laughs> I know a lot of people did, and I'm glad that they did. But that's not the life that I chose. I basically was very I was the overachiever. <laughs> In my friend's eyes, they're like, "Why are you doing so many different things? Why are you always tired and busy?" But I was very happy, you know. I was so happy doing all these things because I realized for the first time that changes are great, and I didn't want to explain why I was doing it. I know everything made sense. It doesn't make sense in people's eyes, but it made sense in mine. Oh, that rhymed. <laughs> okay, and then I moved on. After the business ended, I, I, I also got to talk to different attorneys and law clinic, which was really cool. I talked to lawyers, who were actually practicing law, in Seattle, at a very fancy building, all by myself. I went up there, they looked at me. I looked at them. They were just wondering, "Oh my gosh, she's so young," <laughs> and I looked at them. Yes, here I am, and I am. Trying to form a business, and I understood a lot of. I got to understand a lot of different laws and necessary parts in forming a business, no matter how small a business is. And I thought those were important knowledge that I needed to know. I needed to hear, and I was so glad that I got to that point. I got to learn and hear all those things, and I remember them. I took notes. I'm glad I did. And then. Time moved on. You you see how many changes I've been through. <laughs> There are so many times. If you ask me, was I ever tired? Yes, I was. I broke down so many different times. I broke down when things didn't go as planned, and I would be telling my friends and people I love, like, I'm not enough. I'm not good. I I don't like this. Why am I doing this? I want to give up. I hate this. I was such a hater when I was young. <laughs> And then I would be telling my friends, "No, nobody is ever going to ask me to change. I hate changes." But then, in fact, my friends were telling me, "You're always changing, though. You change your mind so fast." I was like, "Oh no, it made sense to me." So until until this day, I'm still changing. <laughs> well, I'm exploring. I'm experimenting with my life. You know, I'm still relatively young, and I think regrets are scarier than your fear on something. So I didn't want to have regrets, and then I moved on. I went to Tokyo for study abroad. I went to Waseda University. I always thought to myself I would fit right in with Japanese culture because my family is quite Japanese with the way they think, and I thought everything would go well. I mean, I did do very well in terms of grades and classes. But then I realized it didn't match my expectation. But I was okay with that in the end. It was also a great learning experience. And then I moved on, and then we come, and then there was my fourth year in college, last year, as an undergraduate student. I did a lot of art exhibition as an art student, which was really cool. And then. I asked the same thing about my art professor. Does every artist need to teach and everything? And the artists slash my art professors told me they enjoy teaching. They love the traditions of arts. At the same time, I was just. I just realized we couldn't. The Department of Art at that time was always running out of ink. We needed. Printers, and then we we needed people to give us a new ink, but the school never gave us the supplies or the money for a new printing machine, or a new ink at that quarter. But we we saw it was so sad because people were building, people were donating so much to computer science buildings. They were giving so much to other science departments, but meanwhile, we still used the same old inking machine. We still use the same old room, old everything. So I started to see how things wasn't so fair, but at the same time, people were okay with it. 
they had to be okay with it. And that's when I questioned a lot about the difference in between chasing passion, chasing dream, and balancing reality and paying bills. And until this day, I'm still struggling to find out what it means to chase a dream and to know something is your spark and something means a lot to you, and then go after it. And living a life around it, it's there are all different things that I'm talking about. I sound crazy, don't I? All my friends thought I was insane at one point when I told them, "Hey, I'm starting a business. Hey, I'm learning user experience design. Hey, I went to a law clinic. Hey, I wanted to do psychology," and people were like, "What?" <laughs> okay. And then I graduated. I later I signed the contract with my publisher. I basically told people afterwards that, "Hey, I'm publishing a book." In a few months, at that point, I was almost done with my book, and then my parents were like, "Okay, how much are you going to earn with that?" The only, the first question my parents asked was, "How much are you earning with that? How much are you going to earn with the book? Is that it?" And then I was like, "Oh, I was expecting something like 'Congratulations, we're so proud of you. It's so cool that you're writing a book.'" But then instead, they said, "How much are you going to earn?" And then I was explaining to them, "Hey, earning money is not my priority by writing. You know, I never wanted money from writing and everything." And then. My heart was cold. <laughs> I knew they were going to say something that made me upset, but I told them anyways. And but when I told my friends, they were like, "We knew it. We knew you were going to publish a book. Just we didn't expect that it to be that early." And then I smiled, and I know it's okay. And I, one day I'm going to have my book in Mandarin too. When I remember when I first felt my book in my hands. I didn't cry. I didn't scream or anything. I just felt that it was the right thing. I felt very firm. Do you understand what I mean? Like I felt very right about writing the book, and I'm glad I did it. And I want to write a second book and third book.、Mm. But these days, I underst I started to understand that the medium of writing. Is always slower than mediums such as videos and audio, and that's also another reason why I started doing podcast after publishing my book. I want to use different ways and mediums to vocalize and to share the things and stories that I want to tell, and that's why I'm here talking to you. And now I'm thinking about how to interact with you, and how to interact with readers and audiences. Who are listening and who are taking in the information I'm sharing, and I'm working on it. So if you have any ideas, please tell me, and I love to talk to every single one of you if I can. Up until this point, you see how many changes I did, from thinking I would actually go as planned to medical school, to quitting chemistry classes, to majoring in English creative writing, and chose arts over music, but still did a music. Major only choir, and then ended up starting a startup, and then closed that startup, and visited different attorneys, did lab, also did study abroad, and went to different places for business trips. I was just so confused about who I was, but every side of me when I was doing those, no matter if it's psychology, writing. Or business, it was just still me, you know. It's okay to have different sides, thousand different sides. We're just human beings, and it's impossible to stay the same when it comes to different situations. And we could give different meanings to different situations. I think it works on different people too. I would say. The part, the me singing, 
or the me doing arts, the me writing, the me in business. They're all me. It's not like which one is more real. It's not like I'm not honest with myself. Every single moment, I am being me. I'm being myself, and there's nothing wrong with that. And this idea is the new idea that I'm trying to be okay with. This idea is something that I'm slowly taking in, and I wanted to record this and share this with you, so later on I could come back and hear myself talking about myself. Yes. Okay. So I shared my journey with you. Very much in detail. <laughs> I shared all the details with you about how I changed, and I did so many di- different internships. I also later on joined a startup that started by some someone else, not me. It was fashion related, and I also didn't earn a lot at all. And also did internship at Microsoft. It was a mentorship program, actually. And I faced different people from different social statuses. One thing in common, they went for it. They took actions. They didn't just talk and talk. They all did what they wanted to do. And then, even when things didn't go right, they were okay with it. And that's the lesson that I learned. And everyone is just as valuable. We all have something that other people don't have, and it's okay to take time to find out what that something is. So today, if you didn't understand or didn't get what I said at all, I just want you to remember one thing: changes are okay, and it's okay to embrace changes. And we're changing all the times.、So、it's very much okay. And it makes sense, and it's normal. And changes apply to work field relationships, human to human interactions. Yes, it does. So it's okay, and stay open minded and embrace the change. If you like to share your changes with me or any thoughts after listening to this episode, feel free to email me at ahcpoetry@gmail.com. Or message me on my Instagram AHC Poetry, and I'm looking forward to hearing from you. So thanks again for tuning into Midnight O Two. I'm your host Amy, and I will see you next week. Good night. <laughs> <laughs>